Tonight, McDougal McClendon Arena transforms into a living, breathing jukebox. A sellout crowd providing the chorus for a high stakes rivalry game. NC Central hosting North Carolina AT. The regular season MEAC title is on the line. The winner tonight gets the one seed in next week's conference tournament. These are the two best teams in the league. They've already played once this season. Last month in Greensboro, North Carolina AT, a runaway winner. Alongside Julian Viani and Ishraf, and in that game last month, between the two best teams in the league, Cameron Langley was the best player on the floor. The triple-double maestro, the one who definitely facilitates it all and makes everyone better. He's at the top of everyone's scouting report for a reason. He's third in the nation in assists and is going to wow you with some dimes tonight, but he can knock them down from distance and make some moves. He is a fun player to watch. Averaging almost 10 assists in league play. He's had double figures and assists in four straight games. The crowd here is going to be ecstatic. When they played in Greensboro a few weeks ago, they called it Club Corbett over there. And you saw things in a basketball game you normally don't see. That atmosphere rattled North Carolina Central. Today the Eagles are hoping it's their home crowd that can get to the Aggies early because in this environment with these stakes, the surroundings matter. And Central has won 15 straight home games. So if they win this one, and that will be 16. They have been top to beat here. And they're pretty happy to get their home floor. This is a Certainly, what do you want to get home? NC Central really has been the team in the MEAC the last three years. They've been in the NCAA tournament three years in a row, four of the last six. You talk to the folks at North Carolina a and they're trying to get to the place where NC Central currently resides. They're hungry. That's what Will Jones told us. Coach is actually that just there's that hunger here and it's a one big league and that makes it that much more exciting. I came to a one big league and, and I know the stakes are so high and that's what makes it just fun. On the court we can see the three best players in the conference. Julian told you about Langley. He's got Ronald Jackson with him and Jabri Blunt, the leading candidate for the act player of the year stars for North Carolina Central. Jordan Perkins, here is Blunt, knocks it down for 15. Not a bad way to start. One key piece missing the starting lineup for a &T. that's Quay Parker. High flying guard, sideline with a foot injury. So Tyler May gets the start instead. An early turnover by the Aggies. Three-pointer on the way, no good by Nicholas Fennell, more of a defensive player. Fennell flanked by Ben Palmer, who's been in a bit of a shooting slump. We told you about Blunt and Perkins, second to conference in assists. Hey, look at how fast tempo this is already. We can barely get words out. <laughs> Fennell strong to the win. Game is speed. Aggies in the black with the gold trim as we get a foul on Fennell. Fennell, nice job here. Running the floor. He's typically more of a role player, but he can put some numbers up. There's a lot of weapons on this team. And he was a walk on, and last year was a walk on. Now turned into a scholarship player, had a moment last year in the championship. And he knew, hey, next year. Could be a scholarship player. Just really funny to see. 13 and black, Cameron Langley. Third nationally assist, and he gets his first one of the day. Finding Tyler May, the junior, who transferred in from BCU. He'll be the X Factor tonight. No point Parker, and that's what Will Jones said. He wants to see him step up. And he's had some big games. Here he is in a passing lane. And May with four early. At 24 against FAMU, 19 against Nichols. Third stop after beginning his career in Richmond with Virginia Commonwealth. Now 
Mark Mark, the averaging almost 20 and 10, has it taken away. And he's well run. May again! He's got all six for a and Turnovers lead to buckets. And that's going to kill you if you're the Eagles and you can't take care of the basketball tonight. And he's averaged eight and a half steals per game in league play. Tops in the conference. Already a frantic pace. Amplified by the city. This place is crazy. I love it. <laughs> it's popping. Shot clock at five, no turnover. Andre Jackson lost it. Now Ronald Jackson, over the Langley, he's not a shooter, into the paint. We talked to Lavelle Holton, he said the biggest thing tonight for his team, you got to keep Kevin Langley out of the paint. And it's hard to do that. It's easier said than done. And right now, A.O.T.'s aggressiveness on the defensive end is what is leading them to their offense. Under four field goals, three layups. And then Connor Meyer in the shooting slump over to Perkins. Shot clock winding down. Perkins lets it fly. From the elbow offensive rebound, stripped away. Gets it back, and one. And this is the way to stay with it. Pinnell does a nice job here. Staying with it, getting after it, and gets the second chance opportunity in the finish. I love it. He has come out to play here tonight. Both of these teams rank at the bottom of the conference in free throw shooting. But Pinnell, relatively speaking, 72% one of the better free throw shooters on either roster. And that's the thing, both teams get to the line quite a bit. But they don't make them. <laughs> They think they're enough where they can afford to miss some, but not as long as they miss throughout the season. Anthony especially had the highest three throw rates in the country, but under 60% as a team. Andre Jackson, long three, front rim, rebound Perkins. He's got Pinnell on the wing, kind of taking an extra step, blocked at the rim either way. Nice bounce pass, Jackson the extra pass, May plus one. This tempo right now from a and has been ruthless. They're getting it down on the other end, and then they're able to run in transition. And how about this for a couple of terrific passes, threading the needle, and then the finish with the contact. That's the way to stay physical with the basketball. Tyler May has that body control. How often do you see a big guy like Jackson that close to the rim for that? Not that often, and that's the thing that he has, he has those intangibles in this one. He can find players. He doesn't just do one thing. Probably one of the best players on the floor right now. Tyler Mays got nine of the 11 for North Carolina a and A frenzy in the first four minutes. CJ Kaiser had 20 in the first meeting between these two. And he finds Justin Watley inside. This full court pressure that Central is known for. Langley nearly turned it over. Jackson out to Andre Jackson. Good position down low. Connecting is getting too good. Christian yeah. Senior grab transfer out of Youngstown State. And he's gotten better and better throughout the season. He's in a non conference. They played some tough teams. They played some seven footers. And he had to play against an Elton in conference. Perkins guarded by the bigger Haywood, skips it out to Whiteley. Shot clock at five, blunt, contested. Rebound, Ronald Jackson. Langley, Jackson, Blunt, arguably the three best players in this league. All on the floor. And he's got nine, gives this one up. So plenty of time on the shot clock. And was now a long possession for AMT. You want to make them play in half court like this. About Langley slithering inside, and we got by Watley. Central looking to push. Number three, no good for Graves. Want the offensive rebound. Stolen away by May. He's been outstanding early. The lob! Hey, good from Langley. 
What a two-man game. They're just toying with Central, our offense. Perkins looking for help. This time, Graves drops it off for Watley, who's fouled on the drive. And that is our first media timeout. More than two minutes past due. Cameron Langley, the maestro, finding Haygood above the rim. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball brought to you by Cheap. There's only one. A wild start already here in Durham, North Carolina. North Carolina a and to sweep the Sweetest season series from NC Central. He's dropped alongside Julian Biani. Jay Joyner was the head coach for a and and then suspended indefinitely back in December. Willie Jones has taken over. He's kept his team calm, under control. He's the coach of the year candidate in this league, and, and he had to do it under difficult circumstances. And he's done a terrific job, and his team has been resilient. That's the word that we keep hearing from himself and his players, is that they're resilient, and they're bouncing back. And they're playing with that sense of urgency. He's got some guys on his team that really want it. And you have to give him a lot of credit for, for just keeping them within their, themselves and keeping cool. And it's been really fun to watch how they've responded to all the what, turmoil if you really think about it. It's been great. He told us the team has not been distracted. It's a tight knit team. He's changed the way they play, too, since the, the coaching change. They were playing more up-tempo. It's not the same style. So when you add that element in, you're even more impressed. The school has not given any reason as to why Joyner was suspended. But he has been out since December, since before the Illinois game. And you just get the sense talking to folks around the program. The odds are Jay Jr. probably won't be back, and if North Carolina AT is looking for a new head coach, I don't think they have to look very far. Right, no. Especially if they win today. Boy, Willie Jones is a great case, doesn't he? He does. Looking pretty. That seat is looking pretty for him. Wins means you're going to stay employed. All right, now AT can't miss. 17 to 10 as Ronald Jackson hits the J. And their offense right now looks pretty smooth. Once with two shots cut. It's on Haygood, his first. Jabri Blunt, 50 year senior, came to NC Central from Cleveland State. His dad is the great Pittsburgh Steeler, Mel Blunt in Pro Football Hall of Fame. And Blunt, 20 points, almost 10 rebounds per game in conference. He is seen as the front runner for me at Player of the Year. I don't see how it could be anybody else with the kind of numbers he's put up all season. Well, Langley's also in the mix, but in terms of the numbers and 40 minutes a game that plays, I mean, he just puts up 20 a game, 10 boards a game. The man is just their, their everything kind of player. Langley is up there too, but he's not as good as the score. And think about the role that Plunk has on his team. Randy Miller was a first team all conference player for North Carolina Central. He's done for the year, has not played since December, and Blunt has had to be the guy. A season ago, he was a role player in the Bell Mountain. Told me flat out that she around this morning. He says, Blunt would be that player of the year. He said, oh yeah, hands down. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, he's not afraid of the big moments. I didn't see a goal to him call. It looks like everybody's shouting for one. Ooh, awfully close. That That's looked close. to be on the way down. It did. And it goes a block. Well, ball don't lie. Remember, she Wallace was going to be in attendance tonight. There's an example. Tyrone Lyons knocks it down the three. He came up two. We'll take one more. We'll take another. That's right. And she Wallace is here. Another star. Packed house. Wallace coaches high school right here in Durham. There is once. Ainsley likes to go quickly. 
and get a reaching foul against NC Central in that table. So it's Mike Melvin, his first. Melvin see his minutes go up of late. The follow by Langley. This, this A&T squad has been really tremendous. They're first to the basketball. They've got nose to rebound. And his press has NC Central a little round. I thought perhaps it would be the other way around, but when NC Central presses. Look how quickly the ball gets up court. Jackson through the contact. They just catch it and go. You need a timeout. Timeout, Lavelle Moten. And North Carolina A&T has just been ruthless on both the defensive end and on the offensive end. And they're just running the floor like no one's business. Nice job in transition. And Andre Jackson with the hang time. And a shot, Julian Viani. McDougal McClendon Arena is set for this rivalry game between AT and NC Central. And it's getting that time of the year. You're starting to see some rivalries heat up. Championship stakes in play. Kansas, number one team in the nation. They got Texas Tech in London. It's two Eastern this Saturday. And not far from here, North Carolina. And number 12, Duke. Cameron and Dorch is five miles from where we are tonight. That first meeting, Carolina had to beat, and then the shot that never works, Trey Jones missed the free throw. Oh, man, it backfired. <laughs> I know. They, that, those two, when they face each other, and usually is always the best game ever, no matter what. Even if one team has it down here, it's always competitive. <laughs> UNC will go to Greensboro, having to win five games in five days. That's a well of a scandal. The last place in the ACC is maybe the most dangerous, well, I guess it is a 14 seed because Georgia Tech is ineligible, but the most dangerous double to the seed, perhaps, in the history of the ACC tournament. I don't remember them ever being that seed. It's been so long. Yeah. And right here, you was injured. A lot of injuries, a lot of moving pieces. So I'm going to play better with Lincoln. They're also going to push it on court. Turns it over. Number two, Black Fred Cleveland, freshman out of Chicago. He can get hot from the outside. Wiley 5'10, 155 pounds. No whistle there. Three is good. Tyrone Lyon, sophomore from Amityville, Long Island. Kyle Jackson is facilitating quite a bit here. He's drawing two, he's kicking, he's looking to get others involved. The extra pass is in the DNA of this team. It really is. And he's a guy who can score. He's looking though to the screen where possible. So you hear the steal, nice jump defensively. This is what we've seen all night. Got both jerseys on the floor, and North Carolina A&T seems to be the ones that keep coming up with the basketball on the 50-50s. In a lot of ways, this feels like a redux of what we saw a few weeks ago in Greensboro. A&T jumped off and blitzed NC Central early. The Eagles never recovered. NC the Aggies, NC Central Eagles. NC Central in the home white North Carolina NT. Black uniforms with a golden trip. Shot clock at 10. High eight kicks to the corner. Cleveland. Back to Langley. Looking for the cover. Shot clock at two. Andre Jackson has to put it up. He does. And the shot clock violations. Another well, really great defensive possession for Central. That synergy and that chemistry, heads on the swivel, after the timeout, that's what you want to see. So I hate that rule. When air balls at the shot clock runs out, Kaiser has it. 
And you get a fast break for NC Central. Blow the whistle. I know. Blow the whistle and now you have to reset. It doesn't help you. It's supposed to help you. Kaiser makes up for it the other way to get Wichita State transfer. He's been in and out of the lineup all season, had an illness early out, foot injury. When he's played since the new year, he's been productive. He made a 20 point game since January 1st. He's been like a starter off the bench, so explosive. And he's hit some big shots throughout this year. And he's been shot in overtime against the Dean Cookman recently. Andre Jackson, short. Cleveland gathers off the bounce. Langley. Blunt oh. has it knocked away. Another chance here for AT. Oh, second and third chances for AT, just allowing them to get set up. Shot clock to four. Andre Jackson blocked by Blunt. Low Jackson. And they call a foul with the shot clock running down. And the NC Central players are saying there was a shot clock violation. But they will say no shot clock violation. The foul on Fennell is second. Wow. Jackson down the lane here. And then the second chance opportunity. They're looking at the clock. Uh, that's a good call. That's a good call. He, yeah, he had a... Might have been fouled twice on the play. Yeah, he got fouled for sure. Now, Ronald Jackson, just what I like so much about him is just that he can play the three, the four, and five. He's just so versatile and brings so much energy. He does it on a land-based diet. He does taekwondo. And he has a cool recruiting story. Will Jones said he worked in... Before the Juco in Jacksonville, and he was not coaching the college ranks, and he was coaching an all star team of sorts, and ended up having Ronald Jackson on his squad. And he was only 6'4, he wasn't that big, 6'3, 6'4. Anyway, it's on his son, and he saw him again after he was done coaching him, just putting up all these numbers, and he recruited him over here in 18. And he shot up a few inches. <laughs> The most good helps. A chance for a three-point play for Nicholas Spinell. And that's now two on Ronald Jackson, so he'll head to the bench. Yeah, but I like the intensity of Finnell. Finnell has been tremendous. Just looking to tackle for the tip of this game. That's the way to attack. Ronald Jackson gives him another foul. And that hurts. That really hurts. A and T have to take him out because he won't come back in this half. And the first game between these two, Jackson exploded for a third high 28. Yeah. Kevin Langley yeah. was Lob City and they were playing above the ring. Now he's out of the game. Tyrone Lyons in. A 10-20 advantage for A and T. Here's May getting the start for Parker Lee. Follows his own miss. Cleveland in the paint, jumps up, and he's right. He is super quick. Cleveland's the one they want to take one on one. Media timeout. A and T rolling up by nine on the road. One seat in the conference tournament on the line. At the place affectionately known as Club Corbett, North Carolina A&T roared out to a fast start. Ronald Jackson, 28 points, a career high. And this is what you saw, pretty much rinse and repeat. It was Cameron Langley dishing, Cameron Langley finishing. He had himself a triple-double, his second of the season. And the Aggies with an impressive 77-60 win. Neither team has lost since that game. A&T's won four straight. NC Central has won four in a row. Nine of their last ten, the one loss was uh, to the Aggies. And today they play for first place in the regular season. The act title.
in the one seed in next week's league tournament. And the way that they have started this game reminds you how they started that one. The Aggies have come out guns of pleasing. They've got 11 points off of Central's turnovers. That's been a real key here. And they've just gotten a quick start. Three no good for Connor. Six in his last 38 for Pete. How does NC Central slow this game down? That's a great question. I mean, they've got to, first of all, limit the turnovers. When you turn it over, you enable a and to just get up the floor and transition and push the ball. And that plays right into their type of style. So you have to take care of that ball first and foremost. you got to rebound. Otherwise, it's too easy to run. Right, two good points. A lot of turnovers early for NC Central. And A&T has seven offensive rebounds. That's led to a lot of second and third chances. Offensive rebound, how about Pinnell? He's got 10 now to lead all scorers. Where is this coming from? He averages five a game, and he's just spying in there, and that's the kind of intensity you see. For as well as the Aggies have played, it's a road game for a and now it'll be a seven-point game. Pinnell's a guy who just is the jack of all trades for this team. He is their utility guy, and when needed, he scores, and he has been after it from the, the start of this one. He's just been super aggressive. And I love his story. I mentioned it earlier. It was a walk-on. Now he's on the scholarship. Just a real hard-working athlete. Foul on Perkins, his first. I need to miss Perkins. Those two played a lot against each other growing up in Greensboro. Kaiser. Lutz can catch the bottle. Andre Jackson's three out there. They'll get over the back on Hager. Two fouls on Hager, he remains in the game. As NC Central want to break this press. You gotta break it with the pass, that's what's important. And the, the, the pass moves quicker than the dribble, so I like what they just did here. Connor Neal that we have been a huge shooting slump. And all of a sudden, it's a four-point game at 8 0 run by the Eagles. He hasn't made it a single three in the last couple of days, and that was something before the game that we spoke to coach about. And he needs to get hot. He needs to make his first shot. Langley against Perkins. Greensboro and Greensboro. Agu cleans up. I'll tell you what, he is getting in the paint so easily. Blunt was like his dad there, a defensive back. Got a little turned around, though. Dad never got turned around. <laughs> sure, they talk sports so much. It was in his blood. He's also a vocal leader, so you know that he has that personality. Now guarding Lightly, tend to shoot. It was just a screen. And we're going to get to the paint. Drops it off. He's so good inside. And it's May a little easy, too. Again, the facilitating. That's what Cameron Langley does. You've got to be able to look at his vision so he can't do that so easily. Kaiser stripped and fouled. Langley disagrees with the call. Chance is first. Check out Cam Langley here. See how he keeps his dribble alive and he has his head up and his team has to know, hey, I've got to move it out the basketball. Tyler May does that in that situation. You've got to be able to move. Drop into space because your man Langley's going to find you. You mentioned it earlier, the winner of this conference. 
goes to the NCAA tournament. It's a one bid lead. But if a team like AT got it, with a point guard like Mongolia, and let's say they crack in at a 15 seed in a year like this, I'm not right, sure. Not hit <laughs> I'm not sure I want to play a guy like Langley. That all of a sudden maybe puts an upset in play if you're hanging around. These are the teams you don't want to play because a lot of the other teams around the nation don't know as much about them. Remember, in conference, it's more competitive because you know each other's tendencies. Tough basket for Lions. Meanwhile, Langley had to pick up that second foul. Remains in the game and now pressuring Perkins who retreats. Up ahead of foul. Through a double team. Nicholas Finnell having the first half of his life. FC Central with great patience here. Breaks the press. Terrific pass up to Finnell. He giving it the basketball because he is hot right now. You want to give a hot hand the ball. Hager just picked up his third foul. Prince Harry checks in. Harry Moore, who's freshman from Scotland, 14 black. Thirteen points in the first half for Bell. What did you say? Season average was five and a half. Five and a half. That's why right. this is one of those games where guys that are role players can sometimes come alive. And who you ball games? There's the lob! Andre Jackson from Langley. That's seven assists already in the first half for Langley. Who's now just 11 away from the conference is all that record. You can see why he's third in the country in that department. Just terrific vision and he's very high on cue. He's had nine games in league play where he's had these ten assists. Three, four in a row. The big key with him is he's a good ball handler. If you can have the ball in your hands like a string, you're going to find people. Kaiser. And traffic. Maurice almost lost it in the recovery. There's just such a calm demeanor in watching him play. He's never rushed, he's loose as water. That's right, he really is. He do that kind of demeanor in the point guard. Andre Jackson's three not there. Now, if you're in C Central, you know Langley's got the two fouls. Why not just go out? Ben Palmer might be getting his mojo back. And that is what that man can do. He is a straight shooter. He had made a three in all of non-conference here. That turned into a respectable three-point shooter in league play. As had the recent full sweep. And Chris Rowe told me that he's still adjusting as a Division I player. And I know he's a junior, but he didn't get a ton of minutes prior to this year. And he got inserted into the lineup once Randy got hurt. And he's been pushed into it. He's been great. Willie Jones wants a timeout. The a and lead is four. The Eagles had nightmares for this a few weeks ago. Langley to Jackson above the rim. McDougal McClendon Arena here in Durham, North Carolina, just five miles from the Duke campus, popping tonight. You got a DJ in the house, they call him DJ Double J, and Cameron Langley in the first meeting was Mr. Triple Double. He's already on his way to another double digit assist game. And he's on skates today, that's for sure. He likes this DJ's music. <laughs> he has been incredible. He's got seven assists right now. He's just been facilitating beautifully. Like that point guard that he is, he's drawing two, he keeps his, his handle alive, and I love his boys, I love his patience, and this is a team that has 11 assists, he's got seven of them. But one worry, the two fouls. He's got to be smart, and that's something that you've got to trust him 
as someone who would experience to not pick up his third since he's leaving out of here. Yeah, and that's why it's a little surprising right now that he's in the game. 205 to go. He's got two fouls. I would take him out. I don't agree. I know the guy that I played for would take you out with two no matter who you were and how much time is left because he was a conservative coach. Some coaches are not like that. You see why he's in the game. Drives, kicks, finds an open Jackson. Fennell fell down, a turnover. Andre Jackson lost it, Fennell stuffs it! chance to tie. They can take the lead on the three. Kaiser ties it at 36. What a comeback here for Central. This is a real curvy beat too. They've gotten in big holes throughout the season at times and they come back. You can never count them out. Langley tied up. Jump ball is the call. Possession arrow NC Central. Another great defensive play. That's the way to get yourself tied up. Getting in position. And Melvin finding a way to get his hands on the ball. You bring that ball down to little people's country, I say. You're doomed. I, I used to love doing that as a little guy. <laughs> North Carolina Central down by as many as 13 in this first half for the chance to take the lead. Here in the final minute. Block, ball back. Strong in the bucket, Central with the lead. What a motor. He has such a motor. Langley gets his back to even and has a chance to bring T back on top. That's a big bucket from Cameron Langley. He got 35 seconds on the clock. And you're in jeopardy, jeopardy here going down at the half in a nice job putting his hand down and just getting to the rim. He's only a 51% free throw shooter, but did make the layup at least. That is the mission element in his game. He's not a threat from the outside. Not a very good free throw shooter. And he takes the most free throws. That's what's amazing. I mean, this is most of it. What happened to that's this one, and a one-point lead for a &T. About a five-second differential between shot clock and game clock. Mike Melvin will slowly walk it up court. Melvin coming off a 15-point game Saturday at South Carolina State. Melvin calling for it. The up and under and the roll. NC Central on top. Final seconds. Jackson. Langley beat the buzzer, but missed the shot. And 11 3 run to close the first half for NC Central. And after being down 13, they take a one point lead in the locker room. An incredible response from NC Central. North Carolina punched them in the face. They responded with a punch themselves. I like it. This is what we love about rivalry basketball. They call the band here the sound of machine. This crowd has provided its own soundtrack in the first half. It's been loud. It's been rocking. A rivalry game. A regular season conference title on the line. And a home team with a nice rally to take a one point lead and a half time. In the house, phenomenal atmosphere. Here in Durham, North Carolina, and East Rump, alongside Julianne Vianney. And uh, first half, North Carolina A&T, 13-point lead early. It looked just like their last meeting. Cameron Langley got it going early. Oh, my goodness. They came out strong, and he was the reason why they came out as strong as they did. And they just really jumped into action and took a pretty early lead. And it was all about his assist-making, his facility.
Martin. This is a man who we highlighted to start the game because of this. He's got seven assists. He's getting everybody involved. And you want your point guard to be the playmaker. And on the other side, though, you've got to give credit to the role player, Nicholas Pinnell. He has been unbelievable playing out of his mind. He's got 15 points when he averages just five per game. So what a game he's had. NC Central erasing that 13-point deficit, taking a one-point lead in the line. Start of the second half here at McDougal McClendon Arena. Julian Vianney and Ishrop, 40 to 39. North Carolina Central on top of AT. Rivalry game. Packed house, raucous crowd. Regular season conference championship on the line, and the winner gets a one seed in the league tournament, which begins next week in Hoover. And a 15 game home winning streak also on the line here for Central. Ronald Jackson in there, start the second half. He's got two fouls. So does Cameron Langley. Those are the two best players for AMT. Jackson in the low post against Palmer. Working on blunt. If you look at Ronald Jackson, he catches that ball. How much he skies. Watley too strong. The tap is good. Hey, good. Might have knocked it in. That's great. That's hanging around the rim and getting it done. These first couple minutes minutes are very pivotal because to start this game, the NT came out going to blazing. Can NC Central come out that way to start the second half? Tyler May in the start for Quay Parker, who's out with a foot injury, and he's got 13 to lead the Aggies. And the stats don't really reflect what he does, and that was something Mo something Jones told us. He's a dangerous offensive player when he gets the opportunities. The big man in the passing lane, hey good, missed the bunny at the other end. Watley's three, no good, and Langley has himself another rebound. He may flirt with yet another triple double tonight. And with a foul against NC Central. That is on Fidel, who's got 15 points, but he just picked up his third foul. Yeah, you gotta get him out here for a little while. You don't want to risk him picking up that fourth here. He's been their best offensive threat. CJ Kaiser into the game. One to the passing lane for Andre Jackson into the game. May from the elbow. 15 for May. He's so smooth, and he, I mean, he is just their X factor. He plays well. You know it's a good night. Began his career at ECU, then junior college, before ending up in Greensboro. Brought no good. Lockley not there for the follow. Bounds it will stay with the Eagles. Will Jones said he's been waiting for May to have a breakthrough as we look back here at his last play from Central. A couple misses. Stays with them here down offensively. Jabri Blunt has been quiet again. He was quiet for the first game because of these two foul trouble had a lot to do with it. He plays 40 minutes too. I mean, they need something out of him. He's certainly the center of attention on the scouting report. Turns it over there. Nine turnovers now for the Eagles. And he's a relentless worker. I mean, that's something that he's known for. But yeah, you're right. He's getting double teamed at times, and he's the number one guy in scouting reports. Play around the Hager screen. Ronald Jackson, so the screen for Andre Jackson. Tough shot, ill advised, walking the rebound. Perkins accelerates, drops off! There's Jabri Blunt! He will be known, that is for sure. And Jordan Perkins with a beautiful dime. Langley will cut Ronald Jackson. And Watley, the rim protector. And we're talking about one, how he needs to get going. Well, I'll say this is how you get going. Just flashing one down in transition and Perkins 
getting him involved. If they can get out running, get some easy ones, that would go well. The lob to Jackson. Working on blunts. Does not get the bounce. He'll go with a free throw on. And Ryan Jackson is one of the best free throw shooters in this game. 77%. Jackson averaging a double double this season. In conference, 17 points, 12 rebounds per game. <laughs> and then Friday, we've got a double header for you. Zion and the Pelicans host so Jimmy Butler and the Heat at 8 then. Perhaps a finals preview. Giannis to the Bucks. Starting a three-game Western swing against LeBron and the Lakers. Who's your MVP? Is it Giannis? Is it LeBron? Other? I actually earlier this season had Luka Doncic as my MVP. <laughs> I thought he was playing so well, and he still is. I realize he's kind of young, and you can't really, you can't really match Giannis' play. I have to say, Giannis is just, he is just my front runner. He's always been. He's just been out of But LeBron, we could argue all day. Every one of them is worthy, that's for sure. LeBron's my guy, what he's doing at this age, with Anthony Davis missing as much time as Davis did earlier this season. It is incredible. He's probably the most valuable player for a team, that's for sure. When he gets done, man. Does it feel like he's aged? <laughs> Fine one. Unless there's a picture of the average somewhere. Hey, <laughs> Perkins perilously close to that mid-court line. Otto watches. Jackson stabs for Carroll. So fun to watch Langley run the show. 13 in black. This ATT team can get into the NCAA tournament and win the conference championship. Langley can give a high major a lot of trouble. So can Tyler Bay, who's got 17. And we have both been tremendous. There's a lot of really good, skilled guard play on the floor right now. We point lead for the Irish. It's led by as many as 13. We'll get a foul if that's on Langley. Appears it is. It's three on Cameron Langley. this season, North Carolina Central seed bus broke down while coming back from Baltimore. The bus overheated at 1 a.m. and Garrett Bridges came to the rescue. Lavelle Moten, the head coach, was asleep. The driver had to pull over on the side of the highway. They tried to use water to cool it down. Finally, got to a gas station when trying to figure out what to do. Bridges had the idea, let's find it the online manual and so he finds the online manual for the bus and they find that there's an override switch he alerts the bus driver they flip the switch got the bus running for 45 minutes it was good to go made it all the way back to Durham at 6 a.m. Thank God for Google I mean what would we do without the internet to be able to find something he's a hero <laughs> the great story and we get a foul down low Andre Jackson picking up the foul. This year from role player season go to go to guy and perhaps conference player of the year. As Melvin picks up his second guy. And this is the time you want to be playing your best basketball. You want to be peaking right now and 
some of these players are doing that. And that's what's important. You enter the Miak tournament. Coming up. Finally backing down. What snares it away. Melvin on court. Lost it. Just out of control that time. You gotta slow it down and find your open man. Langley to Ronald Jackson! See that quick turnover turns into that for the Aggies. Those two have <laughs> six when they play with each other. They do, they do, they look terrific together. It is four. Aggies led by as many as 13 in the first half. Trail with the break. Kaiser off the bounce. Another rebound by Langley. Six boards to go along with nine assists. And he's got seven points. Remember, he had a triple double the first time these two played. Ronald Jackson! Hello, Sports Center Top Ten! Ronald Jackson is getting looked at by NBA teams, and you see why. Numerous NBA teams are looking at this man. He is just constant energy. Three not there. It'll stay with NC Central. Ronald Jackson is just loving playing with Cam Langley because he finds him wherever he is on the floor. And boy, can he get up. And you know what's funny about this play? You just saw how he sky -bowled. Will Jones told me that what really sold me on him, I went to his Instagram account, saw a video of him jumping over a car. And he, and he said he was sprinting, jumping over the roof of a Neon Sentra. So for me, he said, athletically, I thought it was insane. We look back here, the second chance opportunity. That's a beautiful move as well. But how about that? He was jumping over a car. That's how his coach is like, he sold me on that. <laughs> YouTube, Instagram, you can now be your own hype man when it comes to selling yourself in recruiting. Exactly. You're like, boy, he shot up to a five inches and now he's jumping over roots. And Palmer completes the three point play. 53 50. But this could not be a, a better game here, back and forth. Aaron Wall and Andre Jackson. There are so many guys on the Aggies offense that can just go downhill with ease. And Andre Jackson is just another one. Or I didn't think he got fouled there, but we'll take it. And another one that has that grit as a senior, and he's been reminding this team how bad he wants it this year, and that's what you need to win championships. A couple of seniors that were running the rest of their teammates. Why they need to win? Meanwhile, that was four on Finnell, who's the leading scorer for NC Central. Jackson averaged only five and a half points per game in non-conference. He has more than double that. Almost 13 a game in the MEAC. There's a big time junior college score. A season to go. And it took him a little while to adjust to the Division I game. Palmer catch and shoot. Block the rebound. No look to Palmer as it knocked away. What a play from Blunt. He has some zip to his passes. You get the sense right now. This is. North Carolina Central's window to maybe not just get back and take the lead, but create a margin because Langley is not on the floor for AT. Back here, and you're absolutely right. And these shots need to eventually fall down. But look at this pass. You gotta, you gotta finish that. It's unfortunate it did not go in. You still have a fake go off, but that's the kind of ability that Bunn has. He's so good in, in such a variety of ways. But you're right. This is their moment. It's the gut check. You want to make sure this doesn't get beyond this five-point lead. Once you get into the ten-point range, it gets harder. Watley is fouled. Jackson had picked up the offensive foul on the other end. And Agu has 
just picked up his fourth. about Central is they have held teams throughout the season scoreless for enormous amounts of minutes. One of them was eight and a half minutes long. Saturday night, it's UFC 248 in Vegas. Couple of title fights. You got the undefeated middleweight champ, Israel Adesanya, taking on Yoel Romero. And then the first ever Chinese champion, Zhang Wei Li, defends her strawweight belt. That's a 10 Eastern on paper review at Word of the Ring Park, English and Spanish. Go to ESPNplus.com slash. Langley's back in there for North Carolina, aims at third nationally and assists per game. And a three rattles in for Tyrone Lyons. Sophomore out of Amityville and Long Island. Now, Pinnell is not his for Central. That's not for two weeks in the Aggies. On the other end, he's not in the game. They need some others that'll step up here. Including Kaiser, who gets the bounce. Pinnell's had a nice game today. He's not somebody they rely on for scoring. No. If you start to think, where would NC Central be in this game without Pinnell? Exactly. I mean, that's why you need something like that. Stepping up the way he has. Watley comes out to meet Langley. And May stepped down the line. He's out of bounds. So many coaches and priests facing in that short corner this year with the three-point line move back. NC Central has won the last three and four of the last six MEAC championships. That run began in 2014, and Lavelle Moten, their head coach, in tears at the end of the game. He said he heard his grandma's voice. If you get a chance, go online and find Lavelle Moten's TED Talks. It's called My Grandma's Basketball Truth. You talk to Moten, he talks so much about his mom and grandma raising him and helping him get to the point where he is in life. He grew up in the housing projects of Raleigh. He credits the Boys and Girls Club for keeping him off the streets, keeping him alive. He told me this morning, he grew up in such poverty that the area where he came from, in 40 years, only six kids went to college. And he said his grandma's truth helped him. In fact, when he interviewed for the head coaching job at NC Central, he was asked about his philosophy during the job interview. He didn't really have an answer, so he said, I borrowed what my grandma used to tell me when I got into basketball. Basketball is a game. Games are meant to be fun. Ain't no fun losing, so you might as well win. Yeah, and, and tacking off of that, and he's, which is an awesome story, he said that his grandmother also told him, hey, you're known as a basketball coach, but if that's, if that's what people remember you as after this is all over, you've done a poor job. And he said that that was what has stuck with him throughout the years. And so he does a lot of things for single mothers and in the neighborhood. He has a TV show now they're starting called The Connect. And he wants to give kids a chance to talk about issues in the community because he didn't have that outlet when he was growing up. So he's really giving back to, he's not just the basketball coach, you love seeing that, and we love seeing that. He said he and his grandma used to talk about what he calls the dash. He said everybody has two dates in life, the date that you're born and the date that you die. But what matters is that dash in the middle, what you do in the time that you do have. He certainly does give back to the community. His players love him. He set a great example when he gave the musical chairs with his team a few years ago. At the very first practice, gathered the players around center court and held the game with musical chairs. And finally, when one player won, he congratulated the kid and he said, Was it hard to win a game with musical chairs amongst your teammates? And the kid said, Yeah, kind of was. He goes, Well, imagine a game of musical chairs in your own gym against people you know with your favorite song play. That's what you just had. Then imagine playing against a million people with only 35 chairs. That's what it's like going to the NBA or trying to go to the NBA. And it got the attention of this team. But it's a hard thing to do. It's hard, but you're in college and you have a chance to further your life in other ways through the game of basketball. And the NBA doesn't have to be the be all end up. Amen. I love it.
But Melvin in transition, three point game. And he's Ross Julian Alert Durham, North Carolina, the Duval McClendon Arena. The second of two meetings between AT and NC Central, the two best teams in the conference. The regular season title is on the line. And you get the sense we may see these two down to the wire. <laughs> once more in the conference championship as we get a foul against NC Central. Every time they face each other, it's clearly the most the two most talented teams in this conference. It's also the showcase for the best players in the league. Langley and the Jackson for A&T and Blunt for NC Central. It's interesting as both coaches said they haven't reached their peak yet. Either team, either team. Andre Jackson comes off an 18 point game. On Kaiser, they will draw the foul with the shot clock in seven. Julian, the game seems to have slowed down. That tempo favors NC Central. Sports Center tonight after Wichita State Memphis can names by the ease of reactions from Steph Curry's return. By the way, Lavelle Bowman, he and Steph Curry have a pretty good relationship and uh, they play golf together. Lavelle has challenged Steph Curry. So now my golf game is not... Steph's golf game is good. <laughs> yeah. Lavelle said that Steph is good enough to play professionally if he could focus on golf full time. He's pretty good at his other day job. He's smooth, but I don't like the fact that he's coming back to play. I really don't like that. I kind of wanted him to sit this one out, and he should just... Hey, but the season's a wash, and I just... Oh, I don't know. He just wants to get out there on the court right now. I like it. He loves the game. In traffic, Langley. That would be a 1996 David Robinson, right? Hurt for the season, let's not rush him back. Tank, get the first pick. Oh, here comes Tim Duncan. <laughs> right, that's true. But I just wanted to stay healthy. Langley, like a whirly dig on the inside, and it's blunt. And you mentioned before that the slowness of the pace gave her central. Well, that's true. They can play a little bit more in control like this. It, it, it's how they like to play. In the half court, you saw that. Break the pressure, make the pass, boom, underneath. A one point game after the ECU transfer. Watley finishes down low. We're headed down the wire here in Durham. First place at a regular season title in the conference on the line. Little known secret, they stole those moves from you, Julian. Oh, you know it. I know how to dance. Not, <laughs> not as good as these guys. They've been having fun. Ronald Jackson's been dancing, especially in Baltimore. Can you believe that this man was not highly recruited? I mean, that's what I love about college basketball. That's what's so special. Is some guys that are not highly talented have a chance to achieve their big goals, and this man has really shown why he's being looked at by NBA teams. He just plays above the rim. He's lengthy. He provides that great balance with his athleticism, with his team, and that has only taken five shots. And he's, I, I wish that he had get, was getting more touches here because he's efficient around the rim. 14 double doubles on the season, second in the conference, and rebounding, shooting 56% from the field with league play. He's been one of the three best players in the MEAC this season. Him and Nasir Little played against each other in high school, and really, Will Jones feels like they're similar players. They're almost like that type of players, and now you look at Little and he's playing the NBA with Portland. Finally trying to knife up the defense. Jackson foot was on the line. There's Kaiser. Perkins turbo is up court. And gives NC Central the lead. 
He's got incredible handles. I mean, the way that he controls the ball is just really fun to watch. Sometimes he plays too fast, but he's under control of that ball. He's tough. Here's telling me before the game, he and Cameron Lang really have a pretty good rivalry going back to their days growing up in Greensboro. Playing a lot together and against each other on the AAU circuit. Eagles ball, eight minutes to go here in regulation. NC Central's lead is one, which is what the margin was at halftime. And North Carolina Central taking the lead here. We got ourselves a good one. And Jordan Perkins with the drive and the finish in the lane. Look who's here tonight, it's Kevin Keats, head coach at NC State, former Duke star Nolan Smith here as well. He is Duke's director of basketball operations. This is a big game in the triangle. Sure is. In North Carolina, it's a, this is small town kind of when you think about it. And I know Wake Forest is at NC State tomorrow, so they're home. Here's what's at stake. We've got two teams at the top of the conference, as we've said many times throughout the broadcast. They are the two best teams in the conference. Norfolk State has not beaten either one. The winner gets the one seed in the league tournament. The winner gets the regular season title. And for a and if they sweep the season series against North Carolina Central, it tilts the balance of power because NC Central has been the team in this league for the last six years, three straight conference championships for the last six. Of course, it's hard to beat a team three times in one year, though. That's for, sure, that's for sure. But you're right. What's interesting about Central is that they won the tournament the last three years, but not the regular season. So you almost have to pick for through winning the tournament going to the dance. But hey, it would be great to win the regular season here. And you're certainly guaranteed that spot. You seem pretty confident to we'll see a third meeting. Well, I think that's very, very possible. Don't you? <laughs> oh, I'm all in. NC Central's done a good job in the second half, slowing down the Aggies. Tough to slow down Cameron Langley. Finding a way with the shot clock running down, and he's again flirting with a triple double. Yeah, they're making it more difficult for the Aggies, but yes, Cameron Langley is very good off the bounce. And he is that player that you want to see with the ball in his hands, and Andre Jackson as well. And there's a lot of players on this team that can take it downhill off the bounce. Watley just picked up his third. Andre Jackson of the free throw line. 11 assists for Langley. Nine points, six rebounds. Already two triple doubles this season, including one in the first meeting. Looks like there's water to sweat on the floor, so that's what's going on here. They want the floor cleaned up. There's blood on the court, is what we were just told by one of the referees here. So they gotta clean that off. The red badge of courage. <laughs> That's right. Officials today, Keith Bennett, Matthew Lee, William Hughes. 15 straight home wins for NC Central. Both of these teams had a road weary non conference schedule. In league play, though, they've left no doubt. These have been the two teams back in Greensboro on the 17th of February. a t raced out of the gates and talking to Lavelle Moulton, he said, we were shell-shocked. We started slow, guys were looking into the crowd. They didn't understand, some of them, the magnitude of this rivalry. The surroundings ate them up. By the time they recovered, the deficit was too steep. Yeah, they really have come a long way since the beginning of the season. And they also turned it all, turned the ball over a ton to start the year, and, and they've become resilient. Their full court press has really been helpful because defensively they've been able to hold teams down for many minutes at a time. And I mentioned earlier, but as much as eight and a half minutes in that Florida a and game to hold the team scoreless like that, their defense has been their calling card this year. 
Kaiser. That would have given NC Central the lead. You know what's been stunning tonight? Both of these teams are a combined 19 of 24 from the free throw line. AT came in under 60%. NC Central at 62%. See when it's at stake though, right? When this big game, you've got so much at stake. What? Yes, and one! They ask him to do everything, and he does everything. This is what we love about Blondie, and why they like to run in transition and a little hang time. And he's so physical, just really under control with his body. He really is like a running back. Can you ask? He is. Well, Bell Bolton says he gets that physicality from his father, Mel Blanc, the Hall of Fame football player. And he's given NC Central a one-point lead. 16 points, nine rebounds for Blunt. One count away from his 12th double-double. And it's not even just physical. He, he controls it. He controls his body so well. He fills up the stat sheet, and you don't really have to try to manufacture offense for him either. Kaiser, hesitation, contested, plus one! C.J. Kaiser off the glass. I am a big fan of the glass, especially when you're on the right side and you have a nice angle, stops and pops the mid-range game, kisses the glass, pretty shot. Just as we praise the free throw shooting prowess, the newly found free throw shooting prowess. Three point lead for NC Central. Al Langley. Almost the moving screen by Ronald Jackson. Not a dribbling by Jackson. Andre Jackson does not have the touch from the outside. Langley's not a three point shooter. Langley, drive, kick, Lions. We get a whistle. And it's an over the back foul on Ronald Jackson, and that is four on the senior with 5.33 to go. And that's a big call. And he's going to have to be real careful now. He's going to come out. And that will hurt because you have to take him out for at least two or three minutes here. He'll stay in instead. Ronald oh, wow. comes out. A good chest back in. You've got a lot of faith in him. You're senior. Now you've got to attack him if you were an eagle. You've got to attack him. Front end of a 1 1 is good for Finnell, who's got a career high now with 16. Former walk on, honor student, 3 8 GPA. History major, both free throws good. A career high in points for Nicholas Finnell. Seven unanswered for the home team. Langley trying to weave through. Gets it back for Hager. Blocked. Perkins charging up court. In the corner, the three, way off. Here comes a &T. Langley, one on three. Gets the bounce. A double-double for Langley, 11 points, 11 assists. What a sequence. I had to catch my breath. <laughs> So good at turning corners and coming through in moments that are very important. That's what he does so well. He comes up big when they need a bucket. Kaiser, a rigid test, transfer, blunt, 
the steal, and underrated part of his game is tops in the conference and steals. Fennell, through the contact, gets the roll! This kid is my MVP today. <laughs> Jackson lost it out of bounds to NC Central. An 11-2 run. The Eagles with their biggest lead of the game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Jeep. There's only one. It is loud at the McDougal, McDougal, McClendon Arena. And they didn't stop. During the commercial break, swaying, moving. And North Carolina Central, 403 away from a regular season BF title. They know every word to every song. I just, I'm having fun. I mean, I'm totally entertained tonight. Both on the court and off the court. <laughs> this is what's up. This is the college basketball experience. It's a, it's a mid-major, once it goes, you get a lot of support from the fans, it's just fun. One of a kind, North Carolina a &T. Oh, This is not easy for to play for this reason, Aggies. Aggies had this kind of flavor at Club Corbett. NC Central repaying the flavor and the favor. There may not be many opportunities. a and is headed to the Big South in the summer of 2021. A move that has created some shockwaves in the MEAC, casting down on the future of the league. Remember, Hampton left for the Big South in 2017. Savannah State dropped down to Division II. But we're here and now, we got a close game with a regular season title on the line, and Jabri wants and back to the free throw line. 16 points, 10 rebounds tonight. Closing in another 20 point game as Haygood is fouled out. And Will Jones actually has been preaching the fact that he actually played in the act and compared this game to when he was had to, be, had to go and beat Hampton as a player at their place to do the very same thing. So these guys have bought into that. And this is a league that has had success in the NCAA tournament. You mentioned Hampton, and they won as a 15 seed. So did Coppin State, so did Norfolk State in 2012. Saturday, two big games with the conference tournaments right around the corner. Number one, Kansas. Take South Texas Tech and one. I get the feeling this one might be a road upset here, and then I just have a road from us. In fact, five miles away is Cameron and Door Duke. And Carolina, 6 Eastern on Saturday. Yeah, I love Texas Tech this year. Yeah. Asheville loaded up a year ago. Spread Cleveland, the freshman, and Blunt is there. And now, NC Central can push this to a double-digit lead. They're kind of creating some separation here in the last few minutes. This is a big possession and a big stop for a &T. Perkins, a uh, shake and bake. Blunt crashing for the glass. Cleveland on the ground, and he called a timeout. He did. Yeah, he got it in time. That's a smart, heavy play. That was the last timeout for the Aggies with three minutes to go. Unfortunately, it's the last timeout, but he did maintain possession here. I wonder if you can realize that was the last time. Yeah, you're right, though. This juncture in the game, though, you're down by eight. Yeah. They really do. 
something that worked for A.T. earlier was the press. They've got to make shots to set that up. And they can make a couple of baskets. That could be a weapon here in the last few minutes. And they also haven't been able to get out and run the floor like we, like we saw earlier, where the game was up-tempo and favoring their momentum. And to do that, you've got a rebound, defend, and run. That was exactly what one of Jones told us back in the locker room before this game. He said, we don't defend and run. We need to do that in order to be successful because that's where we thrive. And since they have entered this second half, NC Central has just slowed the game down. And they, not that they're playing at snail's pace, but it's a little off in their style of play. They've done a better job, too, of keeping Langley out of the paint. What are they doing differently against Langley on defense? I think that they're getting really... I think Langley's an interesting case because he can't shoot the three. So what, what I've always questioned is why aren't teams playing way off of him, right? He's not the greatest shooter from distance. So sag in, play a zone. They can beat you from the three. However, if you do sag off of it, then you give him room to be able to see over things and pass. So this is where the challenge lies in covering Langley. Now, they're all tight on him, and I think that that, that can be getting his vision and his view to a degree. So there's two different thought processes there. And to me, I would lay off of him a little bit more, and they can beat me from the perimeter. They're just double team. Jackson and some of the others. Langley guarded by Perkins. Those two have known each other since childhood. Played together and against each other on the AAU circuit. Lions looking to knock it down from the outside. Baseline in and out and a foul on the shot. So two shots coming for Tyrone Lions, a 69% free throw shooter. A foul on Plum, just his first. Today for Lions, but he misses the first. Now this is where being a poor free throw shooting team hurts you. You're in position to score points without taking time off the clock. One out of two, seven point game, 242 to go. Now you see the high pressure back here. Dangerous pass, and Graves really traveled when he came down with it. Well, he might travel, actually, and he might have gotten away with it. A region foul on Cleveland, so Perkins to the line. Tenth team foul, so the Eagles will double bonus from here on out. Perkins a 68th percent free throw shooter. On pace to become the school's all-time leader and assist from the junior. He's on track, though, to be that all-time assist leader, absolutely. Probably get it next year. Both these teams started so well for the free throw line, 19 out of 24 combined. And we were the kiss of death. George Perkins is probably the most experienced player on the central team. Perkins has held the count all year. Langley against Perkins. Langley looking for help. Coming up on two minutes to play. Here's May. He had the hot hand early. Over one, Tyler May. 76-72 possession game. He has been so dangerous offensively today. He's just been in rhythm. They're fouling early here. But why not? They don't make good free throws very well, so force them to be the line. I don't like that strategy. It seems we have a team, really both teams, struggle with the free throw line. Why not put those statistics to the test? We've got a season's worth of data at this point. Absolutely. Another miss, and that's our point here. And why you see the fouls happening at three, almost three minutes, we started seeing the fouls. And if you're 18, 
You foul, and then she Central goes one out of two. That's a win. Right, exactly. This case, 0 for 2. A three can make it a one possession game. Neither team shoots the three well. Langley skips it to Cleveland. Airball. And he's been very, very little outside shooting today. Perkins heads back to the line. Which is interesting. Perky's now one for five at the strike today. Like I said, he's the, one of the more experienced players. He needs to knock these down in a moment like this. We saw him huddling the team together moments before the first free throw. And the leaders on the squad for one six at the line. And the Eagles keep leaving the door open for a &T. Five misses now, the last minute for Perkins from the strike. He's good coaching though for those guys, is he? He's telling his guys to foul. They need to score. Langley. Ronald Jackson. Offensive foul. And Jackson is fouled out. So a &T now, without their top two bigs, Ronald Jackson and Devin Haygood, both who have fouled out. Yeah, I mean, he sticks his left arm out. Had he not stuck the left arm out, that probably would have been a blocking foul. But he, he did blow his left arm out. That's an unfortunate way to go out of the game because they're not the same team without him on the floor. Now the small lineup is out there. Lions at 6'6", the tallest player for a &T. Plunkett, 6'7", the tallest player for NC Central is Kaiser has two free throws coming in. A Wichita State transfer at 67% free throw shooter. Two for three today. What's this like for a coach knowing that your team's not a great free throw shooting team? It's frustrating. Oh my goodness. Actually, we asked about this, and, and that's all we got was a head roll, basically, and it's frustrating, and we just hope that they're going to make them when we be. And it really is a mental toughness thing, and I can speak from a player's perspective because it, it comes down to that. A coach can have been practicing it over and over, you're not making them in the games when it counts. It's the toughest thing, offensive toughness. A foul on the floor, Melvin. A one one for Langley, and again, if you're Willie Jones, you're going for Little Bell Hope the Bell because Langley is one of the worst free throw shooters in the building. And he always has the ball in his hands, and that's where for him to ever play at the next level, he's got to get better. After you push it, you can't be an, an all-star point guard without being good at the line. It just doesn't go together. You can speak to my words. <laughs> to your point, though, if it's one of these teams that is the NCAA tournament and you want to surprise somebody, very rarely does a heavy underdog win against the top two or top three seed without making free throws. Very, absolutely. And usually the best teams in the country do make their free throws. And they don't foul a lot. That's another statistic that if you look into it, the best teams in the country don't foul that much. Free throw parade continues with Kaiser. Kaiser with 20 points in the first meeting, 14 tonight. He's battled illness and injury this season. From the 10 games he's played since the New Year, averaging more than 15 points per game. Remember, came here from Wichita State. Makes the first free throw. 
He gives them that spark off the bench. And uh, like you mentioned, you know, Randy Miller this season, it's been hard to find those other 15 points. So he really protected monitor him in terms of his physicality, the injuries that you mentioned. And, and here's where you really miss Randy Miller, too. He's the best free throw shooter on the team. Right. Kaiser, though, gets the ball. Three possession game. Langley puts it on court. Lions. His fourth three in the game, and he's still alive. 80-75, we come up on a minute to play. We don't have time out left. Kaiser stumbles. He's got two shots coming, a foul. Ray Cleveland's third, all coming here in the last few minutes. Now this is a shot that is much needed, and we haven't seen many three balls here tonight. That's the time to knock it down. Make it a five-point game here. That was actually the fourth foul on Cleveland. Here. Well, guys have been strong at the line tonight, seven of eight. One out of two. Langley bumped. He'll go to the line. Both teams now in the double bonus for two shots. And he tried to follow his shot there, and it wasn't the right timing. And with the way these teams shoot free throws, we might be here for a little while. Not that way. Continuous fouls as well. I want you to diagnose Langley's shooting motion. Alright, let's look at it. Look, I haven't thought of his fundamentals in terms of his shot. It doesn't appear bad. He's got pretty good form. And I think, like I said, it's a lot about repetition, but also it's a mental thing. So 90% mental. Now, sometimes that Shaq, bad, real bad, no touch type of shot, but that's not Karen Langley. You know, we've ragged on a 51% free throw shooter entering the game. He's perfect tonight. Yeah, and he's come up in the moment that's most needed. That's, that's what matters, I guess, the most. Come on, Kaiser. We're going to chance to pad his stats a little more than free throw line. So, plenty of time to go. Only a four point game. And Jackson picking up his fourth foul. Ronald Jackson, a surefire first team all conference player, is fouled out. So is starting center Devin Hager. Kaiser misses the first. And he hasn't, like you said, missed much from there tonight. And they bring Perkins back in. This is an offense defense sub. And Perkins been making his free throws, so you gotta believe he would have been in there for offense too. Yeah, for sure. He's, he certainly has been a, a good offensive player here tonight. Langley quickly. The follow, not there. Once got the rebound. Over to Kaiser, and he goes back to the line. And now Andre Jackson has fouled out. Yes. So Andre, Ronald, those two Jacksons are out. He goes out already. That last is getting good for Willie Jones. Kaiser looks like he got a bump in the quad. Off that pass. As a shooter, when you go to the line as many times as, as Kaiser was out here in the last few minutes, does that help you get into the win? Oh, sure. I mean, that's why when you, when you aren't shooting well in, on the floor, I always say, manufacture some points by getting to the line, drive, get down the hill, get yourself in the free throw line, because you're making them on the line, it, it helps you make them on the floor as well. So, it's a good way to manufacture points. Gets the first, this one to make it a three possession game. Great 
three-point shooters line. So they get hot today with four threes. Misses there. Kaiser the rebound. And they elect not to foul. Now he's across the timeline. Kaiser to Blunt! Exclamation point! the way to protect your home court. The basket counts. And Langley with a chance for a three-point play. North Carolina Central opts to push the basketball and then Jabri Blunt with the finish. And as the words say here, on the scoreboard, protect the nest. <laughs> They had done that here. After North Carolina came out and they really punched them, they came back and did the same. They really had this thing from the end of the first half all the way through the second half. 86 80, and they fouled Fennell. Foul for a bit by Darius Maddox. So Fennell, 72% shooter, having a career night. Adds to the free throw line. And he's a huge reason for North Carolina Central's success tonight. And now coming up huge offensively. I'm not sure they would have won without his play. Especially early. Early on, not a lot was going for NC Central, and it was Fidel who, again, averages five and a half points per game. And Coach Rowe told us he's just that player that executes what we do well. And that comes with experience, and, and he knows the system. He's the jack of all trades. He can throw him out there in those positions. You need one of those on the floor, and it's coming out now in an obvious fashion on the floor tonight. Missed them both. Langley down court. Maddox catch and shoot. Blocked! Kaiser sends it back. One hustle, huh? Wow! Shades of Michael Lee and Hakeem Warwick, 2003 National Championship. Just hustle, pure hustle. Connell, who else with the rebound? <laughs> NC Central. Wins the regular season title in the MEAC. The one seed in the conference tournament. Once again, they are the team to beat in the MEAC. Looking to get to the NCAA tournament for a fourth consecutive season. And what a game for them. The NC Central could not have played any better. Came back and they took control. Using their defense that led to their offense, just a, a tremendously hard fought one win for them. Do you like trilogies? I love trilogies. <laughs> Who says you can't have a good third, good third one? Some people don't like them. I like them. <laughs> we may get a third one. AMC won the first meeting in Greensboro tonight. NC Central on their home floor in Durham, where they've now won 16 in a row. Rally back from down 13 early to knock off their rivals in front of a frenzied crowd. Jabri Blunt fired up. These two may be again the conference championship with the winner heading to the NCAA tournament. I think we're going to see it. And we're going to see this crowd bump it again. For Julian Biani, Ivany Schroff saying farewell from the Dougal McClendon Arena. NC Central, one seed in the MEAC tournament. They are your regular season conference championship. Coming up next, it's North Carolina and Duke 2008. Stay tuned.